So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Well, actually, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're at. Um, my name is Dave. I'm an FDA retail specialist in Tacoma, Washington, and I'll be moderating today along with my colleague, Katie Kennedy, who is on the, on the uh, screen right there next to me. Katie, you want to just say good morning or good afternoon to folks? Okay. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Katie. So this afternoon, Katie and I are going to be moderating our four-hour session. But before we get started, I wanted to give all the attendees a quick orientation to the Pacific Retail Breakout page because it has some information that you'll want to use um, during, the, um, during the afternoon. The first thing is we sort of have an introduction page. And just in case you didn't know it, the, Pacific, um, the former Pacific region is made up of approximately 17 states and three territories. And they're all listed right there in the paragraph. I mean, if you're in Arizona, you might not have realized that the Pacific region included the island, the territory of Guam. So we wanted to share that information. The other thing I'd like to point out is that we have an agenda at, at a glance in the left side, but also we have a very detailed agenda and we welcome you to download that during the course of the afternoon so you can follow along and see who's speaking and, and where they may be from. Um, most important thing, Lee, is we're gonna have a breakout session this afternoon. And one thing I wanna bring your attention to at some time during the day today, I would like you to left click here on this um, answer sheet and download it because you're gonna need that during the break. And um, it's actually, I think Amy's doing it for me now. Amy, if you wanna go ahead and click that, that's fine. And it, it'll actually open up as a Word document down the left-hand corner. And what we'd like you to do is to open that up and save it to your desktop and you'll need that at the break. Um, the, the next thing is um, speaker bios. All the speakers' bios are actually uh, printed in the, um, at the speaker bio block. And if you're trying to figure out particular details on a speaker, we recommend that you open that up and you can read more details. We also have our state and territory reports, which is the bottom file on the right-hand side, um, just above the map. And those are all written this year. Normally we have them presented face-to-face, -face, but this year, every single territory and state did provide a written state or territory report. And it covers the time frame from the last retail seminar in 2019, all the way up to today. And so without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the day. And the first speaker is actually Christopher Smith. And Christopher is the Retail Food Branch Director within FDA's Office of State Cooperative Programs. He is our boss from the Pacific region, but he's also the Branch Director for Branch 3, in which all the former Pacific states in, are included. He's responsible for managing the FDA Retail Food Protection Field Programs within 17 states and three territories within the United States. If during this first 15 minutes or so, you have questions for Chris, please type them in the chat and I'll go ahead and I'll relay them to Chris towards the end if we have time. Immediately following this presentation, Chris is gonna jump into his, to the second presentation of the day and he's gonna do those back to back, but we'll take questions after each, se after each session. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Smith. Thank you, David. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the Pacific Breakout Session. I want to start by giving thanks to everyone who helped organize this event, including our retail food specialists such as David and Katie and our partners at AFTO. We can't thank you enough. This has been an incredible event. This has gone better than I ever could have imagined. So thank you to all. We really appreciate it. As David mentioned, I work for the Office of State Cooperative Programs, which is the field component of FDA's National Retail Food Team. Our office is best recognized through the work of our retail food specialists who work primarily with state, local, tribal, and territorial jurisdictions. Next slide. In this presentation, I'm gonna talk about who we are, who we are as Office of State Cooperative Programs, some of the things we do, how we've adapted to the challenges of the last 18 months and what the road ahead looks like for us. Next slide. When I think about Office of State Cooperative Programs, these are the three things that jump to mind. 
partnership and collaboration, the things we do both internally and externally, working with our stakeholders, collaborating, working together, sharing information. The other thing is the multiplier effect. We use the multiplier effect extensively in our office because we have a small number of retail food specialists. When we're full staff, we have 27 located across the country to work with all of the jurisdictions. So we have the greatest impact through others. We teach somebody something and they teach somebody else. We standardize somebody and then they standardize somebody else. So we provide the tools and skills through training, standardization, technical assistance, with a hope that those will be passed along and passed along and passed along to reach as many people as possible. Next slide. Wanted to show you a quick flow chart or organizational chart of our office. I think all of you know our director, Lori Farmer, who spoke at the very beginning of the seminar a couple of days ago. You'll see we have three divisions within our office, milk safety, shellfish sanitation, and retail food protection. Retail food protection being the biggest one of those three. We operate within a team management model. So all of our managers from all of that, those components meet together every single week to ensure consistency amongst the entire office and the branches. I wanted to specifically point out John Marcello on the right of your screen. Many of you know him as long-term specialist within the former Pacific region. John is currently acting as our retail food division director. And he'll remain in that role until a permanent division director is named. And we anticipate that'll happen probably within the next few weeks. And under John, you'll see the three branches that make up the retail food division. And as David mentioned, we are, current, we are here on branch three, which includes the former Pacific region, as well as some parts of other former regions as well. Next slide. This graphic shows our phenomenal team of retail food specialists. And these are all of the ones we have from across the country. They are the linchpin of our operation. They are the engine that makes us run for what we do. I've never worked with a more committed group of food safety professionals in my career. Branch three, as I mentioned, is our team, which includes the former Pacific region states. You'll recognize people like Katie Kennedy, Brad Tufto, David Engelskirchen as long-term, long-time veterans of our team here today. I can't say enough about the work they continue to do to provide to our internal and external stakeholders. Would click ahead for me. I wanted to point out that we've had two retirements here within the last year, since the last time we had a, our seminar over this last 12 months. And they are Chris Moore from Branch 2, some of you may know her, who's based in Kentucky, and also Rich Ramirez, yeah, who retired earlier this year. Rich worked many years with us and did an exceptional job working with California and our Pacific Island territories in Arizona, Rich is a, just a fantastic team member, and we miss him very much. And I also wanted to mention, you know, even though it hasn't happened in the last 12 months, we list Miss Lisa Whitlock, who a lot of you know as well, who retired a little over a year ago. So we miss both Lisa and Rich very much. Click ahead one more for me. And I also wanna point out our brand new specialists. They're not brand new anymore. They started with us in fall of last year, but they're new since the last time we've met. Uh, we have in branch two, Carolyn White, Kwanzaa Duggins, and Justin Asbury. They are all exceptional specialists. Here on branch three, we have Alicia Johnson and Catherine Del Mundo, who many of you know. Alicia's over with the Southwest Group right now, but Catherine is with us here today. Catherine comes to us from Guam. Many of you know her already. She's currently working in Arizona. All of these new specialists are quickly becoming superstars. We're so excited to see what they're gonna do in the future with our team. Click ahead again. And finally, I wanted to recognize Diane Kelch, who is a new member of our Branch 3 team and here with us today. 
She transferred from Florida to Southern California earlier this year. We're so fortunate to have her on the team now. She's making an immediate impact in working with the state of California. Next slide. Here's a graphic of where our specialists are located across the country. The dark green is our branch three states. So you can see that's much larger than just the former Pacific. At full staff, we have 27 specialists. We currently have 23 on board. We are going through a hiring process right now. We'll, you know, federal government does not move very fast when it comes to hiring. We are trying to bring people on as quickly as we can. Next slide. As mentioned yesterday, our national retail food team within FDA is made up of four partner offices. You see on the graphic here, Office of State Cooperative Programs, which is us, as well as CIFSAM, Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, our Office of Training, and our Office of Partnerships. Over the last couple of years, our team has been working hard on the development of strategic and operational plans to help guide our work and move us in a more in a very in a uniform way. Next slide. This is a busy slide, but I just wanted to point out a couple of things about our strategic and operational plans. Our overall goal is to reduce the occurrence of foodborne illness risk factors in retail food establishments. We do that with these three broad strategic objectives, increasing uniformity, consistency, and capacity of state, local, tribal, and territorial program partners, promoting active managerial control of foodborne illness risk factors within industry. And third is maintaining a strong national retail food team workforce. Next slide. <laughs> this slide shows how we work together, how our national team works in partnership and synergy with internal and external stakeholders and initiatives such as the Association Collaborative and a new era of smarter food safety, which we heard talk, we talked about on the first day of the summer. We are not working in silos here. We work together in alignment in building partnerships that help us leverage resources and reduce foodborne illness in this country. Next slide. What a time it is to be working in retail food safety. As you heard Frank Giannis, our great deputy commissioner talk about on the first day, this is a time of great change. We're seeing more change in the next 10 years than we've seen in the last 30 or to 40 years in retail food protection. We shouldn't be intimidated or afraid of this change. We're gonna rise to that challenge just as we always have in retail, just as we have in the last 18 months through this pandemic. Next slide. So how do we do that? Part of it is advancing with technology. We've all had to adapt to this over the last 18 months. Government always seems to be a little bit behind everyone else when it comes to technology. But we've worked hard to adapt and meet the needs in this last 18 months or so. I feel like we're making great strides with our virtual course offerings. We're gonna do that and we're gonna do that again within the next year. All of our courses will be virtual again next year. Our Office of Training and Education and Development course registrations are now open. So you can sign up, you can send in your registrations for those courses. And as you see in the bottom right of the screen, we've also been partnering with our associations and the virtual delivery of presentations and seminars, just like this. Next slide. Of course, I have to mention our new retail flexible funding model. We are so excited about this. We have never had such a great amount of money within our retail food program that all of you are able to take advantage of. We're really hoping this will become a game changer for all of your programs. And I encourage you to please take advantage of it. We know there's not enough program, enough funding out there for your programs. We hope this will help meet your needs. Next slide. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the retail program standards, self-assessment and verification audit workshops. We've been offering this workshop, this course for many years in a face-to-face -face format to help our jurisdictions getting the information and assistance they need with completing self-assessments and verification audits. It's been very well received, it's always very well attended 
that's taught by our own specialists. And we're committed to continue offering that. And also active, we are also actively working on adding a virtual option that will make it even more accessible to all of our jurisdictions and fields. Next slide. So as far as the face-to-face -face course goes, we are planning two face-to-face -face offerings in FY22. And of course that is all dependent on COVID and what's going on there. But we are moving ahead with planning for this. And we are committed to continuing to offer the face-to-face -face version of this class. As I mentioned, these have been very well received, very well attended, and I can tell you nothing beats the face-to-face -face interaction you're gonna get with instructors and the other attendees in this workshop. So we're hoping to offer two sessions as you see here in 2022. As a reminder, yeah, one is in conjunction with the NEHA seminar in Spokane, Washington. The other will be in the Southeast part of the country. I think Charlotte is where they're currently shooting for there. So more info will come out on that. And as a reminder, you can apply for retail flexible funding model funding to attend this, these workshops. Next slide. So even though we're committed to offering that face-to-face -face course on a regular basis, we realize that not everyone can get to it when it's offered or when you need it. So we wanted to find a way to expand access to more people who could benefit from it. And that's why we're currently working on development of a new virtual version of this class. Our goal with that is to ensure that the info is easily accessible to anyone whenever they need to have it. Next slide. The course that's being developed will be an online self-paced self-assessment verification audit course series, and it will mirror, mirror the info provided in our face-to-face -face course. Our goal is for it to be available within the next year. It'll be available for free for all of our regulators on our OTED site, and it can be used to get the initial info you need to conduct your self-assessment. It's available for auditors to use if they need to get information on how to conduct verification audits. And it can also be used as a refresher. So if you've already taken a face-to-face -face course or you've taken this course before, you can always go back and look at parts. So it's designed both to be the initial info you need, if that's what you need it for, or a refresher, whichever one you need it. We have a team of specialists working on this course and in partnership with Office of Training and Education Development, as well as NEHA. And we're also utilizing subject matter experts from across the country as contributors as you see here with Helena Barton with Washington State. Next slide. <laughs> Finally, I wanted to mention our National Risk Factor Study. Hopefully you saw Mike Nordis's presentation yesterday about the Delhi data collection on the occurrence of risk factors and the relationship to food safety management systems. I wanted to mention again that this report is available online and our specialists, all of our specialists have access to that presentation. If you wanted to invite them to come give a presentation somewhere, the same one that Mike gave yesterday, happy to do that or give you any other info you would like about it. Also wanted to mention that we did have a round of data collection that was in progress when COVID hit 18 months ago and we suspended it because of COVID. We are planning to restart that when we're able to, possibly as early as October 1st, and complete those data collections over the course of the next year. All of that is dependent on COVID, of course, but our specialists may be reaching out to you about that as we move forward. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. We appreciate any assistance you're able to provide to them. Next slide. And finally, I wanted to take a minute to thank each and every one of you for the work you've done over the last year and a half throughout this pandemic. I've read through the state and territory reports that David mentioned earlier that were submitted for this seminar. And I really appreciate everything you've been doing in the most stressful circumstances. This has been the biggest public health emergency of our lifetimes. And I've been continuously impressed with the professionalism, dedication, and adaptability that we've seen across the board. I can't thank you enough for everything you're doing to protect public health and ensuring retail food safety.
David, that is the end of that presentation. I'm happy to take present your questions if there are any or move directly into the next one. So don't see any questions in the chat. Amy, is there anything you need to push my way or should we just move on? You can go ahead and move on. I don't see any questions either. Okay. Everybody, if you do have questions, you can put them in the chat and we'll catch them later on or we'll get you an answer. But Chris, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the next presentation. All right. So in this next presentation, well, they bring it up, we are gonna talk about recognition for retail program standards accomplishments. So in this next presentation, over the next few slides, we're gonna walk through several program standards accomplishments that have happened since June of 2020, when we established a new recognition program. And our goal here is to take a few minutes during each seminar from this point forward to recognize the work that's being done by all of you, you know, from one seminar to the next. You're all doing a phenomenal job in the most stressful circumstances that I just mentioned. So it's really important for us to take a few minutes to recognize that great work that's being done. Next slide. The milestone certificates and letters are generated for different program standards accomplishments. And you see all of those listed here on the screen. They include awarding for jurisdictions that have conducted full self-assessments of all nine standards, whether it's the first time you've done it or if it's a repeat, you have, you have second, third, fourth one you've done, doesn't matter. Also for successfully having standards met and audited. And finally, for jurisdictions that have successfully had all nine standards audited, we also have a certificate for those. All of these accomplishments recognize a huge investment of work and commitment to your program and something that you should take great pride in. We encourage you to display these certificates and share them with the employees on your teams and the decision makers within your agencies and organizations. We can't thank you enough for everything you do. And it's an honor to be able to recognize those achievements with today. Next slide. So let's start with a full listing, a listing of full self-assessments completed since June of 2020. Again, that's when this program was established. So we're going back to June, 2020, completing a full self-assessment where a jurisdiction compares their program to each of the nine standards, conducts a gap analysis and determines priorities for program improvement. The first slide shows all of the jurisdictions who conducted either their initial or second self-assessments. So we have Island County, Lynn County, Benton Franklin Health District, Clackamas County, Deschutes County, and Liberty County. Next slide. The second slide shows the jurisdiction that conducted their third self-assessments in that time period. As a reminder, full self-assessments are completed by jurisdictions every five years at least. So conducting a third self-assessment represents a true commitment to continuous improvement. Yeah, you've been on our program a while now. We really appreciate everything you're doing. Carson City, Flathead City County, Nevada Health and Human Services, Northern Marianas Islands, Department of Public Health, Seattle King County, Snohomish Health District, Southern, Southern Nevada Health District, and Tacoma Pierce. Next slide. And finally, we do have some that are on their fourth cycle self-assessments. Montana Depart of Department of Health and Human Services, Monterey County, California, and Pima County. Thank you so much for everything you're doing in completing that fourth cycle self-assessment. Next slide. Now let's take a look at some of the individual program standards recognition. These next few slides will walk through jurisdictions that met standards and had them verified with an audit. Standard one is the regulatory foundation and that relates to food code adoption. Although we didn't have any jurisdictions yet meet and successfully have this audited within the last year, I know that many of you are working towards it. And we're, of course, here to support that effort however we can, and we'll look forward to recognizing you at future seminars. Next slide. 
Standard two relates to train regulatory staff, which includes initial training of staff, standardization, and continuing education. This was successfully met and audited by Southern Nevada Health District. So congratulations. Next slide. Standard three relates to juris jurisdictions inspection program, ensuring that it's risk and hazard based. Great job to Clark and Cowlitz counties for their successful audits within this last year. Next slide. Standard four is a uniform inspection program, which is all about quality assurance. We don't have anybody in this category this year, but again, look forward to recognizing you in the future for those of you who are currently working on it. Next slide. Standard five, foodborne illness and food defense preparedness and response. This is a big one. So congratulations to Southern Nevada Health District again for meeting standard five. Great job. Next slide. We don't have anybody who's met compliance and enforcement, which is standard six within this last year. Again, look forward to recognizing you in the future for those of you who are working on that. Next slide. Congratulations to Alaska Department of Environment, Environmental Conservation, Clark County, Flathead City County Health Department, and again, Southern Nevada Health District for your great work in meeting standard seven and having it successfully audited. Many thanks for your work with both industry and the community, providing training to industry and telling our public health story to the community is so very important. Next slide. Big congratulations to Washington State Department of Health on meeting standard eight for program support and resources. Ensuring adequate staffing, equipment, and resources is so difficult to do, especially in, especially in these trying times. Next slide. And finally, congratulations to Riverstone Health on meeting standard nine program assessment. This includes conducting a study on the occurrence of foodborne illness risk factors in your jurisdiction and implementing an intervention strategy. This type of assessment is very, a very important component of any retail food program to determine program effectiveness. Finally, I wanted to take a minute to thank all of you for the work you're doing on the standards, whether or not you are recognized here today. The program standards, the retail program standards are all about continuous improvement. And that often happens at an in increment, happens incrementally over a long period of time. Never ever stop seeking program improvement. And thank you so much. We really appreciate everything you're doing to protect public health. David, with that, I believe I'm done two minutes early. Okay, thank you, Chris. That's great. Um, are there any questions for Chris for either one of his presentations so far? I mean, he did the FDA OSCP retail update and the milestone recognition uh, accomplishments from all of you. I don't see any questions. So let me just say thank you, Chris, for your time today. I know you're going to be with us all afternoon and you'll be closing out at the end. Um, I'd, I'd also like to say I'm really, really uh, honored to be a part of this, this, uh, this, this region. Um, the accomplishments you did with program standards are outstanding. And if you stay tuned during the break, we have a little sneak preview of, of a lot of you in action and we'd like you to see that during the break. 